Hey babes, it's Kayla Craft with the Mommy Millionaire Podcast. I'm a mom of three littles, ER nurse turned self-made millionaire and lifestyle entrepreneur. I am bringing you inspiring stories, business and mindset tips to help you be shameless in pursuing your ambitions. Hey, 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 mommy millionaires. So today we have a special edition and we're calling it Crafting in Chaos because Chase and I are going to do little bonus episodes like this for you guys a couple times a month probably. And what we want to do is just show you real life about how we're learning every single day, literally crafting in the chaos of our life. We are obsessed with our life, but not everybody could live our life. That's for dang show. So those of you guys that don't know, I'm Kayla Craft, and my husband is Chase Craft, and we've been married for, in August, it'll be 11 years. We have three little kids that are nine, seven, and four, and we run, well, three different businesses now together, okay? So we've been, and we've been working together for the last five years. Yeah. Yeah, we've been working together for the last five years. So one of the things that I think you'll love about learning from Chase and me particularly is when I first got into business uh, eight and a half years ago, Chase was working for his dad. His dad owns an oil business, basically, to keep it simple, okay? And Chase was had been working there for a while. He was a manager over one entire division of the company. And uh, he just didn't believe in entrepreneurship at all. He was kind of like set to take over the family business and that was going to be that. But one thing that I love about Chase and I really admired about him as a businessman was he, when he started working for his dad, he was able to take that division that he was in charge of from literally like about, it was about to close down to being worth millions and millions of dollars in just a short couple of years. And that was through the recession, okay? So the reason he was able to do that was because he is very good at sales. He is very good at connections and he is very good at hiring the right team and empowering them to do their job really, really well. And so knowing all those things about Chase, I wanted him to come over with me ASAP. And he was not about that life at all for, you know, a couple of years until I was making enough, too much money basically where I was going to have to hire somebody else. And it made sense. Like, why would I not just have my husband come on? Right. So that's a little bit about him. He's a genius. He still consults for the family business that is worth millions and millions of dollars. And I don't say that to brag. I'm just saying like, he's, he's very highly sought after business consultant and we get to have him as a part of mommy millionaire, which is really cool. And if you guys are in our mastermind, you see a ton of chase and you see that he's, (laughs) he's the brains behind the beauty. (laughs) So welcome chase to crafting in chaos. Hey, Hey, excited to be here. I'm excited for the show. I really think that that we're going to offer a lot of value with the show and being together because we're so different. I mean, if any of you know Kayla and I, we're like polar opposite different people, especially when it comes to business. So I'm super excited to be here. Well, I like to say I'm the visionary and you're the integrator. Like, I feel like you put, I have this idea and you put wheels on it. You make it happen. Yeah, for sure. And I think... I think I'm working. I want to be a good visionary and I'm working on, I'm working on. You don't have to be. Just let me do that. No, I know that. I'm, I'm saying I'm working on dreaming bigger. And I think that's what this, you know, what we're talking about with this podcast um, later is like just opening up your eyes to see, to dream bigger. Um, so yeah. yeah, but I, but I also am the integrator of everything that we do. So <laughs> So one thing that's really interesting is that I feel like it's crazy that we're having this conversation right now and that we're doing this podcast together because there was a time that I really thought me and you were not going to be doing anything together. (laughs) And here we are with three kids and we just got back from this amazing trip to Monaco and, uh, 
that's what we want to talk to you guys about today because Chase and I just spent a week in Monaco, which for those of you guys that don't know, it's the French Riviera. Monaco is a country in itself. And it was really cool because me and Chase had never traveled to Europe together. We'd never been, period, at all. But we got to go with our friends, Rob and Kim Murgatroyd and uh, Josh and Sarah Pendrick, Chris and Lori Harder. And oh my gosh, who else was there? Uh, do, uh, Dr. Dr. Darren White, Dr. Tony Best, all these people that are really amazing in business and in life. They're just awesome human beings. And Rob curated this like awesome experience for us every single day. Um, he's He's actually in Europe still. He'll stay there for four months and then come back to California. He takes his family every single summer to to Europe. And so he knows a ton of the locals. And we got to learn a ton about Monaco. And before, I, I honestly thought Monaco was a city because it's only one square mile. So you look at it and you wouldn't think it would be its own country. It has its own king and prince and all this stuff. And we got to see the castle. It was just crazy. 35,000 people live in this little one square mile and it's beautiful. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. And it was really cool to get to experience that with Chase and with all of our friends. But the reason why we wanted to talk about it was because no joke, up until two weeks before the trip, Chase and I were not going to go. We weren't going to go. We had so much going on. We had just had this launch that didn't really go as planned our, you know, Chase's dad had to have surgery last minute. So we had, we didn't have a babysitter all of a sudden. Like there were all these things that just went wrong. We're like, you know what? We just don't feel good about leaving the country. So Chase and I tried to get our money back from the airfare. We couldn't get our money back for the hotels or for any of the excursions and stuff like that. So we're like, we were just going to call that a wash. But then when we couldn't get our money back for the airfare, which was $9,000, we're like, you know what? This is just a sign we need to go. Right? So... (laughs) Yeah, no, I mean, we we literally were trying everything to get out of this. And uh, we kept on hitting roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. And we had all of our friends like, you guys have to go. If you've never experienced Europe, it's like, this is a once in a lifetime thing, especially if you're for your first time to go to Europe and then go to Monaco was like, you know, we had everyone telling us that like, if we could make it happen, we had to make it happen. <laughs> so we ended up going. But the reason why I wanted to share that little lesson is because sometimes in our lives, like we have to plan things like this way ahead of time because even look at us, we were trying to sabotage sabotage our own success and our own fun because it just didn't feel like the right time, right? And a lot of us can do that in business, in our life, and we never take vacations. But because Chase and I signed up for this trip, a year ago and had paid for it in advance. We, we set up our team to you know, like, you know, be in charge of everything while we were gone. You know, everything was set in place and we just couldn't get out of it because, you know, when you've spent, you know, $20,000 on a trip, you're like, I'm going, right? And so the lesson for all of you guys is basically you've got to make time for the things that are important to you. And the reason why Chase and I invested in this trip a year ago was because we know we're workaholics and we don't take enough time to play. And we like to just work, work, work. And, you know, then we hang out with our kids and our friends were always going like, well, what do you guys do for fun? And we're like, we just, we don't, we don't really do anything. Right. And so that is why we had invested in this. And so do those things ahead of time. If you guys have trouble playing, if you have trouble, you know, disconnecting from your business, or if you have trouble even connecting as a Uh, you know, in your marriage, like you have to set these things in place. And I'll be honest, like when this trip was going to Monaco, Chase and I were not in a good place. I feel like we were just really at odds because we're just very stressed. But going to Monaco, I feel like it was a perfect time. Like God knew we were going to need this trip to reconnect and just kind of just get re-inspired together. Yeah. And if you know me at all, which most of you don't, <laughs> I am driven by ROI. And so if Say what ROI is. Uh, return on investment, so everything that we spend in our business and our life, I'm always looking for what's my return? What am I going to get out of spending this money? And so it's difficult for me to spend $10,000 on some plane tickets when 
when you know I don't see there's no there's it's not a it's not a business investment it's not there's no ROI attached to it so when we were trying to get our plane tickets back and this is still a money mindset block that I need to get over right like when we were trying to get our plane tickets back I in the back of my mind I'm going oh that's awesome I get ten I'm going to get that ten thousand dollars back you know and then I can invest that into something that's actually going to give us a return which is totally a money mindset thing that I am still working through kind of give you guys a little background. You know, Kayla had mentioned that, you know, I, I, when I was working for my dad, I was working through the recession in 2008 and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I have a lot of, I have still to this day, I'm still working through a lot of money mindset issues because when give you a little background, I graduated high school. I started working for my dad right out of high school um, as a laborer and he literally painted the outside of like tanks in the oil fields. If you guys ever like drive by oil fields, that was Chase like <laughs> painting tanks. Okay, probably most people aren't driving by oil fields, but water tanks, anything like that, basically anything steel. So, but in in two thousand and nine, I took over or to, end of two thousand eight, I took over as project manager over um, the this division that I that I was working in. And I had, I think I had like 20 employees that I was managing. And literally a month later, we went through the the recession of 2008, 2009, that whole deal. And I went from overnight, went from 20 employees down to three employees that were working furlough days. So they were doing trading off three days a week overnight, like literally never, I was 19 years old, never managed a single person in my life. And now I'm having to manage furlough days and recession and the whole thing. And so that shaped my money mindset from the very beginning of scarcity. And, um, and so that's stuff that I have to continually fight through and, and work through because now you know, I don't see, I, I have a hard time seeing value when I'm putting $10,000 into a trip, seeing value in the fact that one, that I'm super grateful and thankful that we're even able to do that. And also that there is going to be value and an ROI when it comes to just self-care, when it comes to uh, opening up our mindset and what's possible. And I think that's what we really, really took from this trip of Monaco was like, wow, there's, there's so much money out there and there's so much money for everyone to, to, um, you know, grab a hold of. I know, you know, this is something that Kayla always talks about is, you know, going to the ocean and the, the ocean is like the pool of money out there for the world. And, you know, not going out there and taking little cups, but going out there and taking huge buckets. Um, and it's just there for you to get. The pipeline. You yeah. got to take the pipeline. Yeah. It's there for you to grab. And so that's what we really, you know, that's what we really realized on this trip was like, wow, we, we got to think a lot bigger than we already are. And what I didn't realize when I was spending the money and what I didn't realize was my return on investment was that I, I was going to, be able to dream so much bigger and get so inspired and bring that back to our team. And yeah, so <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. So it makes me happy to hear you say all this stuff. And I think it's important for people to understand where you came from and how far you've come, because I think a lot of people are still stuck in that scarcity mindset, even though they might listen into this podcast and hear it all the time. Like these are all the tools but it never goes away. I mean, you live with me, which I'm constantly like, you know, here, like we're switching this. We're, we're you know, reframing the way that we're saying that. We're reframing framing the way that we look at our bank account. There's all these things and you're still going to have these things that trigger you, right? And so uh, I think it's interesting. But Monaco for me was, you know, I was excited once we we're like, okay, we're going, we were all in. We we're like 100%, we're gonna go and have a great time. And when we got to Monaco and we were learning about the country and looking at all of the beauty and looking at all the legacies that have been built there. And the thing about Monaco, you guys, is the richest people in the world live in Monaco. And the reason why they live there is because there's no taxes. So literally billionaires from all over the world go and they reside there. They change their residence to Monaco because that's where a lot of their money is basically kept safe. So we were looking at $350 million homes on the ocean. And they're not like what you would think would be $350 million. Like, you know what I mean? They're not like gorgeous. They were just like beach houses. And 
it was very eye-opening. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, so people that live here are like, <laughs> they, you know, and then I realized, oh my gosh, I even have some money mindset blocks because I think that's crazy, right? And so it was really cool to just like realize I still have so much to grow and I still have so much to um, accept into my life. And, and the reason why I say accept is because you guys, it's not about going out there. I know I always say, go out there and get what you want. What you want is already out there for you to take. It's already out there for you to receive. It's about you becoming that person that can accept it into your life. Because even me, I was looking at that $350 million home and thinking in the back of my head, I could never have that. And I knew that was a money block. And I go, wait, I got to change that up and just accept that into my life and go, oh, that home could be mine if I wanted it. I don't want it right now because they need to do some work on it and update it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> but it was really cool. And so I want all of you guys to realize that. And that was the biggest realization for me. We had dinner at um, this beautiful, uh, I can't remember. I, it was above the, it was next to the Monte Carlo Casino in Monaco. And we had dinner next to Tommy Hilfiger and Chris Jenner. And I really had like a pinch me moment because you guys, those are billionaires, right? And I know other billionaires, but these are like famous billionaires. And I was looking at them. I'm thinking there's no difference between me and them, except they've just learned a couple more things than me. And they believe that they can have anything they want in the world, right? And so I was like, okay, I have to become that next version of Kayla who who believes all of that. And then I will be able to accept those new things into my life. And all of you guys listening in right now, ask yourself that. Who do you need to become in order to accept those things that you've always dreamed about, that you've always wanted in your life? Because it's just another level of you. And for me, it was, I I just, I uncovered some more limiting beliefs of myself and and it's about believing something different. Now that I'm aware of the limiting beliefs that I had, And now I just know, okay, I just got to think something different. And so I've legit been brainwashing myself every single morning. And Chase has heard me. I have this meditation go off all about wealth and abundance at 5 a.m. every morning. And it plays for two hours while I'm getting ready, while I'm still laying in bed in the morning. And it's just saying over and over again, last night I woke up at 2 a.m. I just put it on. And I fell back asleep to it and I let it play for three hours while I was asleep. So I'm just brainwashing myself into believing different thoughts once again. And that's what you honestly have to do. You have to brainwash yourself into believing something different. I did it in Monaco the whole entire time too while I was sleeping. Well, actually while I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep in Monaco. (laughs) Yeah, we had trouble sleeping. That's why I'm having weird dreams because I'm having like this lady talk in my sleep all night. (laughs) I'm like I'm waking up. I'm like, who in the world is in my bedroom talking? And it's Kayla's meditation thing that she just has playing in the background. Um, yeah. So like going off of just reframing your mindset, this was something that I really realized in Monaco too. Was you know my team can attest to this. Is I'm always talking to them about if if we want to be a fifty million dollar company, we have to frame our business like we are a $50 million company right now. Um, because if, if we grow there, then we're not going to be acting like $50. If we, if we, when we grow yeah. there. See, there's another mindset. <laughs> um, so what I tell them is that if we aren't acting like a $50 million company now, we're not going to operate and act like a $50 million company then. And so that was a real realization for me and my mindset was if I'm not reframing my mindset to think like a billionaire now, I'm not going to get there. You know, I mean? it's not, it's not going to come for me because I haven't, I haven't put myself in that place yet. Just like I, I am in my business. I'm in, in our business. We're putting the systems in place. We're putting the, the framework there to operate like a $50 million business, but I'm not doing that in my, in my mindset. And so I think that was a big realization for me was I need to get out of just just the nuts and bolts and what we're doing in our business, but also just reframe that all that stuff in 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 my mindset as well. Uh, one of my favorite things that we did was we got to go um, drive classical cars through the French Riviera. What what kind of car did we have? I don't remember the year. I know it was a it was a Porsche nine eleven, but I can't remember the year. It was funny because. We had test drove Porsche 911s a couple of years ago, and I, I thought my heart stopped because I was going so fast. It was crazy. 
Yeah. So, so just go, that's a funny story because so we get behind this brand new 2007, I think it was back in 17 or 18 Porsche 911 turbo, which is a very fast car. And I let Kayla take the wheel uh, first out of the dealership. So we pull out of the dealership. The dealership let us, just her and I, just take the car by ourselves. So she's driving and we're getting ready to get on the freeway. And I told her, as we're pulling out of the dealership, I told her, okay, be careful because this thing has a lot of power. And she, you know, it, you guys know Kayla. She's like, oh, I got this, whatever. Okay. And we're getting on the freeway and she punches it. And I thought we we're going to die. And she's screaming. And her head like slams to the back of the headboard. She's screaming. We're swerving all over the place because she can't control it. And I thought, this is it. We're going to crash this $250,000 car. And I don't, I don't think I have insurance for this. I don't know. I'm just going to have to check my insurance plan because I'm pretty sure that crashing a dealership car is probably not covered. And that was our 911 um, <laughs> experience before this one in Monaco. <laughs> Yeah, and needless to say, we did not get that car. No. I think I ended, that was when I ended up getting my G wagon, yeah, right? That's a, which is really weird that we were choosing between a G wagon and a nine eleven turbo. It's like the most opposite vehicles ever. But that was our that was our choice. Oh, and God. we chose the we chose the G wagon because we couldn't put luggage in the nine eleven when we lived in Bakersfield and had to go to LAX all the time to travel. Mm-hmm. Now we barely travel. <laughs> uh, so it no, was now we just get Ubers when we travel. Yeah. Money. You got money now, Bubba. Money. Anyways, I loved this experience because uh, we just drove, you know, through the French Riviera. It was just an experience like no other. Like, I can't even explain it. We were just going through these hills and there was a whole line of us. All of our friends were all in these different classical cars. Sarah was in this really old red Ferrari and Chris and Lori were in this. um, What were they in? Oh my gosh. The car that they had was so cute. And what was so funny is we're in this line and I was driving and up ahead, we see our friends, Darren and Tony break down and it stopped the whole entire line of cars. And it stopped all of Europe, basically. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like everybody was stopped because Tony and Darren broke down. And it was crazy to me because it was no big deal. It was no big deal. In America, like they would have been getting flipped off. Like there would have been people getting out of their car, like going off because this whole highway on this hill was stopped because they were stopped, right? And it was just no big deal. They got out of the car. They pushed the car out of the way. And then Tony and Darren got in our car and we went on with life. And that was huge to me because I thought about how many times in our lives do we make a big deal about things that don't really matter. And over in Europe, they just, they're just so laid back. Like that was one thing I was like, if I could bottle this up and take it home, I would. And I would pay a million dollars to have it because they're just, it's just like, eh, if it doesn't matter in five years, we're not really going to care about it now. Like you don't see angry people, you know, like nobody was getting flipped off. It was just, it, it was just so crazy to me. And I thought, how many times do I do this on a daily basis where I get angry when I'm driving and somebody's like slow and I'm like, come on, hurry up. I got to go. And it really just taught me to legit not take life that seriously. Cause it's really not that big of a deal. Like it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah. We stopped traffic a few times too. (laughs) (laughs) So it's been quite a while since the last time I drove a stick shift and yeah, that was, that was interesting. There was lots of, we were driving on lots of hills and there were like little stop signs at hills and there's a train of cars behind us. And I'm worried about letting off that brake with the clutch on and rolling into the back of um, another vehicle. And so, yeah, we, we stalled her a couple of times in the, <laughs> with a line of cars everywhere. Yeah. That was um, not my finest driving moments. And so when we get home, he's like looking into how to buy a stick shift car because he wants to get good at it again. That's the competitive spirit in him. I love it. (laughs) I don't like being bad at anything. Hey, I like being married to a winner. (laughs) There you go. So now I can buy a new car. What kind of car do you want to get? What? Like? I know you took the boys the other day. They told me. Yeah. Yeah. I want to get a Ferrari 488 Spider. Is that a stick shift? No, it's not. 
Oh my gosh, there's spiders, McLarens, hoppin' hoppins, ants. <laughs> what the heck? I can't keep up with all these cars. I can't keep up with all these cars. But um, what's so crazy is that like a couple years ago, you guys, like our our friend got a really nice car. And Chase was like, oh, there's just no purpose in it. Why would you spend all your money? Like if you had $400,000, why would you spend it on a car? And now Chase looks at it as, well, you don't, you don't, it's not like one or the other. Like you could, you could get the Ferrari, the $400,000 car, plus you can help the homeless, plus you can do this, plus you can do that. Like, it's not like, it's, we used to just be so like scarcity thinking like, well, if I get that and I spend a lot of money there, then I can't have this and I can't help those people. And, uh, it's just so cool to see. I keep on, I think, I feel like that's the theme of this podcast is I keep on saying how far you've come, (laughs) but I think to, to just like talk about that just for a second with you guys is like, I wish people, we could go back in time with people and do a podcast five years ago. So people could see that when you do put in the work, and you're focused on change, you surround yourself with the right people, everything does start to change for you. It truly does, but it's a process. And, and just knowing like Chase was so like, he was just a good old boy. He was just a good old boy. And I never thought that he was ever going to, he's still a good old boy, but he's very like, you know, he just dreams big. He's like out there looking at hundred million dollar yachts and going, oh yeah, we're going to have one of these one day. And he said it so sure of himself. I was like, wow, who am I married to? But I love it. Yeah. I think, um, my buddy, Chris Harder and I had this conversation, um, the other night, you know, and he, and he says something that, that I think is really true is look on people with inspiration, not envy. And that's something that so much of us carry in not being shameless with what we, what we want. And that's something, you know, that's, Kayla's tagline, right? Like be shameless, like go get you what you want. And part of, part of my mindset issue was that I would cared. I cared about having nice things because I cared about what other people thought about me. If I had those nice things. Well, you have a dad that has a nice cherry red Corvette that he has a cover on in his garage that he's probably drove three times because he doesn't want people to know that he has a Corvette. Yeah. And I, and I understand that mindset. I I love him. Yeah. And I think, I think that, you know, I used to have that mindset because that was an, that was a mindset issue that I need to get over was I would look at people that had Ferraris. I would look at people that had the, the, the multimillion dollar houses. I would look at people that had the yachts and I'm like, Oh God, you know, like I would get an attitude towards them. Um, because that was, because that was a mirror for me because I felt like if I had those things that people would be looking at me like that instead what what the what the mindset shift that changed in me was i looked at it that at that as inspiration because now now i'm in the position that i could have those nice things and i know that that i don't need to be worried about what other people are going to think i need to be worried about how i'm going to inspire other people by having the, that stuff because i know that it's an inspiration for people that you know when when w- like when we were in monaco we we took speedboats from Monaco to Saint Tropez, and we were driving by yachts that I'm not kidding, guys. Like these things, I thought they were cruise ships. Like I, we were driving by, and I'm like, "Oh, that, what what cruise ship is that?" And they're like, "No, that's a private yacht." I'm like, "What? Like three hundred million dollar yachts? Insane!" Like I I've never seen anything in my life. You know, five years ago, I'd look at that. Psh, really? Like who who needs a three hundred? Like that's ridiculous. Why would anybody? Now I look at it and I go, okay, like there's the new bar. There's the new bar that we just set for ourselves. Like, like we're going to, I want to work hard so that I can have the freedom to have a $300 million yacht and be able to take my fam, my whole entire family on vacations across the world. Like, you know, like there was, it was, it was inspiring for me. And all that is, is just a mindset shift in looking at people and their ability to um, have real legacy wealth and freedom, looking at them as an inspiration, not looking at them with envy. And that was huge for me and Monaco. I mean, I, that's something that I've obviously been working on my mindset in the last five years to, to, to change that about myself. But, um, but it was really like, it was really heightened in Monaco because you're, I mean, you're, 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 in an, a, a square mile, one square mile of the richest people in the world. So you're seeing, you know, 
people having chauffeurs in Rolls Royce Phantoms and, you know, five, you know, $200 million yachts, $300 million yachts. You're having people buying. We were at, we were at a club in San Tropez that one of the cabanas at the club was a $50,000 minimum. You know, it, just to sit in that cabana, you had to spend fifty thousand dollars in. I was really pissed at Chase that he couldn't buy it for me. Yeah, so like, <laughs> your eyes are just open to the fact that, well, we're playing small. Like, I I want to have you know, even though I don't know that I would spend fifty thousand dollars on a cabana, but I want to have the freedom to be able to do that if if that opportunity came up and we all you know decided that's what we wanted to spend our money on and it not be a big deal. You know, like. So just just being able to open up our eyes to what's possible and being able to dream bigger that was like that was so fun for me and I that was one of the biggest takeaways that I had about Monaco and just about Europe was the sky's the limit and if those people can do it I can do it. Mm. I mean I feel like we could go on and on about Monaco but I the last thing I'll share with you guys is this is that just on that boat ride home we were on a yacht because Sarah and I wanted air conditioning <laughs> and we didn't want to do the speedboat. And we were sitting up on the, uh, is it the bow of the boat? The bow of the boat. And we were looking at the sunset and Chase was night night because he drank too much of the pool. <laughs> and Rose ate all day, baby. <laughs> and um, anyways, and I had just ate pizza at the club. Like I was like, I'm not even touching that human soup party that's happening in the pool. It's disgusting. <laughs> and uh, I was on the bow of the boat and I was looking at the sunset and it was a sunset like I've never seen before. It was just, I can't even explain it. You guys are going to have to go there to see it for yourself. It was just so beautiful and breathtaking. And I looked over at my friends, Yasna and Josh and Sarah, and we're like, how is this our life? Like, how is this our life? I'm 31 years old, sitting on the bow of this beautiful boat, looking at <laughs> this ocean in the French Riviera uh, and just on a yacht and life is great. And my kids are at home, happy, having so much fun with my mom. And I'm like, how did this happen? How did this happen for myself? A girl that came from legit nothing to being on this yacht that created this life for herself. And, and I was in tears. It's even bringing me to tears now because what was so crazy when I first started my business, you guys, was I said, I want to be on a yacht with my friends when I'm 40 years old. That was my goal. Like you can ask my friends, like when I first got started in isogenics, that's literally what I said, because to me, that was so not where I came from. Like that was the sky, like dream. That was the big dream. Like there's no way that's ever going to happen. And here I am at 31 years old, doing it nine years sooner than I thought possible. and this is legit my life. And it's so, it gives me chills and it just makes me so excited for all of you guys because, you know, I believed it when I was 23. I had no idea how it was going to happen. I was just like, oh yeah, that's going to happen. But here I am, you know, eight years later living out that dream. And I didn't even realize it until I was on the bow of the boat that I'm, oh my gosh, I visualized this eight years ago. And I had forgot about the visualization. And that's exactly how manifesting happens, you guys, is you believe a dream, you know, and you put it out there and then you let the process happen for you, you know, because I didn't even know we were going to be going on a yacht. That was what was crazy. Rob set it all up because I wanted air conditioning. <laughs> and the other, the other group went on a speedboat. So it's just crazy how God will work everything out in your favor. And it comes back to that affirmation. I always tell myself, life is rigged in my favor. Like it, it legitimately is. And I want all of you guys to believe that that is possible for you guys too. I'm getting emotional right now. Why do I always get emotional when you're on? It's, I think it's because you're my safety blanket or something. And I'm like, oh, everybody will still listen. Um, but I just want all of you guys to believe that you guys can have it too. Because I, I, <laughs> I was thinking about my mom and like just so many like money blocks that came up. And I think about like my dad now that I, you know, you guys heard about in the last podcast that I don't talk to my brother who I don't have a relationship with. There's a lot of like mess that I came from and I could have been in that mess still suffering, living paycheck to paycheck, not believing in myself, not inspiring people, but something happened differently is because I had somebody believe in me. 
love you. <laughs> I love you too. But even though I don't know all of you guys personally that listen into this podcast, I believe in you. And this is why we do this. This is why we're getting on and doing this, sharing our hearts, bearing our souls with you guys is because we want to inspire you. We want you guys to know that if you believe it, you can do it. You know, plug into this podcast, invest in yourself, and don't let anybody ever tell you that you can't have something that you dream about. Because so many people told me, no, you're crazy. There's no way you're ever going to have that life. I was the underdog. Like people didn't believe in me. And I just want you guys to know if you feel like that out there in that world, like that people don't believe in you, know that Chase and I, we do believe in you. And we're out here hustling 24 seven to figure out a way for everybody to live this life and give you guys the tools that you guys need to live in abundance. Well, I couldn't look at you during that because I was going to cry too. But I just want to tell you, like, when Kayla tells you that that people told her that she wasn't capable of doing it, or that that you know she wasn't gonna, she wasn't going to, you know, if anyone knows Kayla, Kayla has she's she is the epitome of a visionary and dreamer. You know, she, like just the fact that that we are where we are today. Like if she, if she would have told, she did tell me that when, when we, when she first started in her network marketing business, she would tell me we're going to be millionaires. And like, I'm sure there's a lot of people that listen to this podcast that, that the, the, the person that is being trying to diminish your light the most is the one that's closest to you, your spouse. And that was me. And I'm so thankful that the only reason that we're in this place that we are in now is because Kayla didn't listen to me and didn't let me diminish her light. And like she had every excuse in the world to not go after what she wanted because the people that were the very closest to her, the people that should have been the, the biggest cheerleaders were the biggest critics and the biggest, the, the ones that were, that were, like shooting the arrows into the back like that that's and so i just want to give you guys encouragement that she she was able to push through that you know and thank god that i that i turned and changed and all of that so there's hope for you spouse or for you women out there that have and maybe men i don't know who all is listening to this podcast but there is hope that your spouse is going to change and is going to turn and be supportive and you know hopefully one day be able to dream with and all that kind of stuff but i don't want that to be your excuse i don't want that to be what's holding you back from getting what you want because i'm telling you right now that they will be thankful in the end when if you stay the course and you you know don't let their negativity or their discouragement keep you from getting what you want I love that. Yay. (laughs) So I thought a fun thing to do to wrap up this podcast would be for all of you guys to plan something fun for yourself, something that would inspire you to dream bigger. And it might be a big investment for yourself, you know, but if you haven't gone on a a trip with your spouse recently, um, plan it. You know, even if it's a year from now, even if it's a year and a half from now, start putting money away, start, you know, pocketing. That's how we paid for this trip was we paid for it monthly. We put away, you know, $3,000 a month to go on this trip. And it was just a non-negotiable for us. And so I want you guys to treat your fun as a non-negotiable as well, because I promise you, you're going to come back re-inspired, ready to hit the road and you have time to connect with your loved one as well. So I challenge all of you guys to do that. When you do do that, when you book something or you put it on the calendar, tag us over at mommymillionaire.co. Come into the Mommy Millionaire community if you're having trouble doing it. And let's talk about it together in there. For those of you guys that don't know, we do have a Facebook group that's completely free called the Mommy Millionaire community. We talk about the podcast in there. And we also, you know, have real life discussions about what's going on in our lives. So head over there if you are not in that yet. 
Also, if this podcast touched your life at all and you feel inspired and you think it might help some of your friends, we would love to see you guys text it out there to your friends. So if you just go and you copy the link and you text it to your friends, what we're going to do is we're doing a giveaway for a Mommy Millionaire Live general admission ticket. If you text this podcast to 10 of your friends, send us the screenshots over at info at mommymillionaire.co. You text us all of the screenshots. You'll be entered in to win a general admission ticket. So we can't wait to see you guys all at Mommy Millionaire Live. Yeah, yeah. See you guys. Thank you for listening to the Mommy Millionaire Podcast. For free resources and materials, head over to mommymillionaire.co. Make sure to follow Mommy Millionaire on Spotify and subscribe on iTunes. And it would mean the world to me if you left a five-star review of the show. And as always, ladies, go out there and get what you want.